Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on theory of inference or on inference theory in discrete mathematics. In the previous video, how to derive the conclusion from the given premises using truth table method with uh, 5 or 6 example problems that we are discussed in the previous video. Now, in this video, how to derive the conclusion from the given premises without using truth table. Okay, so why we are going without using truth table method for deriving the conclusion from the given premises? First, we have to learn about that reason. After that, we go for what is the procedure we have to follow to derive the conclusion from the given premises with one or two example problems. Okay, first of all, what is the limitation of truth table method for deriving the conclusion from the given premises? If the premises and conclusion contains more number of statement variables, then it is very difficult to construct the truth table. Okay. So, then we have to use some other procedure to derive the conclusion from the given premises and check whether the conclusion is valid or not by using some procedures. Okay. So, in that procedure, we have to use, first of all, two rules of inference that is uh, first one is a uh, rule p and second one is a uh, rule t in addition to the rules of inference we have to use some implication formulas and equivalence formulas okay this implication formulas and equivalence formulas are also used in the derivation of deriving the conclusion from the given set of premises using a uh, rule p and rule t and another rule is also called as a rule CP. Okay, rule CP can be explained in the later videos. Okay, so now uh, first of all, what is a rule P? So a premise may be introduced at any point in the derivation. Okay, suppose we are deriving the conclusion from the given set of premises. In that derivation, we have to introduce any premise at any point in the derivation. So that is called as a rule P. Okay. Second one is a rule T. Suppose two formulas are there. From that two formulas, we have to derive one new formula. So that new formula may be introduced in the derivation by using a rule T. Okay, that new formula is tautologically implied by the preceding formula. Suppose a formula S yes, is tautologically implied by two or more of the preceding formulas. So then that formula S yes, may be introduced at any point in the derivation by using a rule T. Okay, so rule P means a premise may be introduced at any point in the derivation. So, whatever the premises that are given in the given problem, okay, we can take any premise that any premise may be introduced at any point in the derivation. Okay, here derivation is nothing but we have to follow some procedure to derive the conclusion from the given set of premises. In that derivation, we can take any premise, that premise may be introduced at any point in the derivation. Next one is a rule T. Suppose a formula S yes may be introduced in the derivation if formula S yes is tautologically implied by one or more of the preceding formulas. At that time, we have to use a rule T. Okay. So here these are the important implications and these are the important equivalences. So these formulas are mostly used in the uh, theory of inference without using truth table method.
Okay, so here uh, implication I nine. Suppose P comma Q. Ah, uh, P comma Q is there. P comma Q implies P and Q. Whenever P, whenever Q are occurred in the derivation, we have to combine them by using and connective. So using rule I nine. Okay, next one. Rule I ten. So negation P comma P R Q. So this is one formula, and this is one formula. We are getting a new formula. Yes. So this new formula S is a tautologically implied by using this two preceding formulas. So that is Q. This is called as descent to syllogism. Okay. Next one I eleven. So P comma P conditional Q implies Q. This is called as modulus ponens. Okay. I twelve negation Q comma P conditional Q implies negation P. So this is called as modulus ponens. Okay, modulus ponens. Next I thirteen P conditional Q comma Q conditional R implies P conditional R. This is called as hypothetical syllogism. Next I fourteen P R Q comma P conditional R comma Q conditional R. implies r this is called as dilemma okay these are the uh, six important implication formulas so these formulas are used in the derivation for deriving the conclusion from the given set of premises okay next one important equivalence formulas e1 negation of negation p is logically equivalent to p this is called as double negation law Next, E ten P R P is logically equivalent to P. We are already know that. E eleven P and P logically equivalent to P. We are already know that. E sixteen P conditional Q logically equivalent to negation P R Q. This is most most important equivalence formula. Next, E seventeen negation of P conditional Q logically equivalent to P and negation Q. Next one E eighteen. So P conditional Q logically equivalent to negation Q conditional negation P. So the contrapositive of P conditional Q is negation Q conditional negation P. So this is also one of the important formula. Next one E nineteen. P conditional Q conditional R is logically equivalent to P and Q conditional R. So this is also one of the most important formula. Next one E twenty one P by conditional Q logically equivalent to P conditional Q and the Q conditional P. So this is also one of the most important formula. E twenty two P by conditional Q logically equivalent to P and Q or negation P and negation Q. Okay, so these are the important equivalence formulas. These are the important implication formulas, and these are the two rules: rule P and rule T. So these rule P and rule T and important implication and equivalence formulas are used to derive the conclusion from the given set of premises without using truth table. Okay. so how we are deriving the conclusion from the given set of premises uh, without using truth table by using this uh, implication and equivalence and a rule p and a rule t formulas that we are discussed with one example problem